guys and welcome to The Bachelor where today we are talking rhubarb, all things rhubarb and stay um, tuned till the end of the video because I'm going to give you some top tips on what you can do other than rhubarb crumble with all of your rhubarb that you've got. There's lots of things that you can make with it and I'm going to lay them out and show you in an array. But first I want to, for anybody that doesn't know how to stew rhubarb, I know lots of you watching all think who doesn't know how to stew rhubarb? There's tons of people. I didn't know how to stew rhubarb for a long time so I thought it's worth just going through the quantities and how you do it, okay? It's really very simple. You will end up with some beautiful, if you can see that, some beautiful stewed rhubarb at the end that you can freeze, freezes beautifully. You can use it on lots of different things. So, to stew rhubarb, what you want to do is get your rhubarb, you want to wash it and top and tail it. So take the ends off it and chop it up. I don't, some people peel theirs, some people like to peel. I like to leave mine with the peel on because I think it's what gives it the nice um, color. Okay, and the best way to do it is to take a one cup measuring spoon, like we always use, one of our big cups. And I would say it's all roughly, you know me on the batch lady, roughly six heaped cups of rhubarb to one cup of sugar. Okay, so that's what I'm gonna do. Right, so I've got six in here, which is about um, oh, half a pot full. So I'm gonna add one of sugar. Now, it's not that precise. You can add more sugar if you want, it depends. A lot of our rhubarb is like this big, thick stuff and it's very tart. It's not quite as sweet as the lovely thin stuff. So you might want to end up adding more. But that is basically it. I like to put the sugar in at the end, at the end of putting the rhubarb in because then it all falls through all the rhubarb, okay? Then you are going to want about half a cup of water. It's not a lot of water, but half a cup over the top. That is going to go on your stove. I put mine on the medium heat rather than the high heat. So put it on your stove and set your timer for about eight to 10 minutes. Keep giving it a stir and you will eventually end up, let me get a spoon out, you will end up with this sort of lovely mush. Now, set it for eight minutes because if you want it sort of not quite as mushy, not in a compote type thing, then you want to take it off just slightly before. Um, if you want to leave it slightly longer, I wanted this to run through ice cream for this one, so I wanted it really quite mushy. And if you want it really smooth, then just get your little blender out and just give it a hand blend and it'll turn into a lovely smooth puree. So you've got three different consistencies that you can then use out of the same pot. So if you want, you could take some out and then leave the rest to go into a puree, okay? Very easy. Let me tidy this away and show you all the different things that you can do with your rhubarb puree at the end, okay? Okay guys, so our rhubarb is stewing on the stove. I've got my stuff that I already made here and I just want to show you some top tips on what you can do with it, okay? So, you can make gin um, with it. So I've got a video on this. So take five minutes, really easy. Make yourself some rhubarb gin. It's beautiful, it comes out pink. It's a lovely taste, especially for the summer. Give it a go. What I would say as well that I like to do is when I stew my rhubarb, I sometimes take the, the, the top of it out when it's um, there's a bit that's it's still sort of intact, if you see what I mean. It's stewed, but it's intact. And I like to put it in the bottom of a champagne glass with a little bit of the compote and then pour it in your champagne and you have a beautiful sort of rhubarb champagne cocktail for when people come over. Um, I love doing, for the children, is um, to make up these little, this is just normal yogurt, shop bought yogurt that I've bought in a huge tub. And I just like, um, I've, I've kept lots of these, you can use any dishes you want. Um, and I just layer it up like a rhubarb full, um, but it's just yogurt and rhubarb, so it's really healthy, it's really good for them. Um, and you can even plonk a stick of um, rhubarb in the top if you want. So that's a good way to get them to eat it. Another thing that's really nice to do is I buy these sort of shop-bought pancakes. You know, they're like crepes, so you'll get them in the bit beside the dessert section. Um, and I just like to fill them with um, either um, yogurt or you can use creme fraiche or you can use cream and then put a layer of the um, rhubarb along it as well and you get a really nice fruity pancake that's made in seconds. So if you take your rhubarb um, that you've already stewed and you put it and um, seal it in some flat bags and um, put it in your freezer then you're just taking it out, it'll defrost really quickly and then you can just scoosh it on whatever you want. I am about to show you a video that is how to make your own freezable ice cream, a really good one that makes ice cream in no time and it doesn't need an ice cream maker. It's really, really easy. Now, um, what I like to do with this is, let me just get my ice cream scoop and I'll come back and show you. 
Okay, got my scoop. Right, I've got my ice cream that I made, it's plain. Now if I wanted to turn the whole lot of this into, it's already homemade ice cream, if I wanted to make it rhubarb, I would simply pour, um, as it's just starting to set, so this is still soft, it's half set, okay? So I would then um, put my compote along the top. I don't want to do it with this one because I've already got one in the freezer, but I would, um, in fact I will. Let's just go for it, shall we? I shall just put it in. I've already got a rhubarb one, but I've got people coming over this weekend, so it'll be fantastic. Okay, and all I like to do is swirl it through the ice cream. So just start gently swirling it. And you can serve up, this is beautiful serve. Even if you've got something like a normal basic rhubarb pie, um, or a rhubarb crumble, then you can just serve this on the edge of it, or you can serve it with some lovely um, sort of shortbread biscuits, it's fantastic. And look at that, I mean, you've made a dessert in seconds. It's got a lot of fruit in it, it's got your lovely ice cream, it's absolutely perfect. You can also make your rhubarb crumble, um, this crumble mix from Aunt Bessie's is fantastic if you've got vegans in the house because it works out perfectly. You can make a really easy rhubarb crumble. And if you want as well, if you've watched my video on how to make rhubarb gin, you can also use the gin, uh, the rhubarb out of the gin after a month when it's been in there. And you can make very boozy um, rhubarb crumble, which has got uh, which is a gin rhubarb crumble with that as well. So um, I hope this has helped solve some of your how to use your rhubarb problems. But the best thing is, make sure you freeze it because you want rhubarb throughout the rest of the year. And that's the great thing about freezing. You don't always have to eat what's in season. Just get it, put it in your freezer. If you don't have time, if you've cut your rhubarb and you do not have any time at all, just wash it, chop it and put it in your a, a big bag and put it in your freezer and then you can do any of this whenever you want. You don't have to do it right now. Okay? Thanks for watching The Bats Lady. Take care. Bye.